Acceptance of cannabis in the United States and worldwide, it would have to be High Times Magazine. Decades long, international influence, a constant string of, of qualified professionals coming through. They're helping people grow better, know more, and to achieve greater things. Currently, the High Times Cultivation Editor is the guru of cool. It's Danny Danko, and he joins us today for the Digital Hash Bash broadcast. Welcome, Danny. Hey, thank you for having me. It's an honor and a pleasure. Well, Danny, what a great thing Hash Bash has been over the years. Not your first time here, right? No, not at all. I've been to a handful of Hash Bashes uh, in the past. It's amazing that it's the 49th Hash Bash. Uh, that's just incredible. Next year's the 50th. I hope we can all be out there on the Diag. Uh, for that, you know, pivotal moment because, you know, Michigan and Ann Arbor have had this amazing history of uh, cannabis law reform going back all those years. And it's truly an honor to celebrate that with you guys. And uh, as always, you know, it's Rory from Arbor Side, Compassion, that brings me out there. And so shout out to him and the whole Comp Compassion crew. I think it's important in this time uh, during the whole crisis that we free the prisoners, uh, the marijuana, not, you know, nonviolent prisoners that are, are locked up for cannabis right now all throughout the United States and all over the world. Uh, those people need to be freed immediately. Um, and we also need to keep fighting for more home grow. Obviously, this, you know, if we're going to be cooped up, you know, at home, we need to be able to home grow. Uh, so we got to fight for that. And, you know, I know everything is so partisan these days, but this isn't a partisan issue. Uh, the fact of the matter is, you know, I know with you guys that I'm preaching to the converted, but part of my job and all of our jobs is to convert the unconverted. And that's the, you know, the preachers and the teachers and the uh, cops and the prison guards and people who need to understand uh, that this isn't a partisan issue. Uh, you know, why do I say fight? You know, because we need the words uh, as ammunition to fight the war because they're fighting a war on us and we need to use our words to teach them that cannabis can help the economy, uh, cannabis can create jobs, reduce crime, okay, which is counterintuitive to some people to understand, but I've been to the hash bashes and tons of other cannabis events and there's never any violence at a cannabis event. Uh, yeah, so yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you can reduce crime. <laughs> And again, the police resources yeah. can go toward violent criminals. And so you're actually helping the police devote their resources to where there should be with people that are committing criminal acts against other people. Uh, so that's important. And I think we can help the seniors and the veterans. So it's important to teach people, and especially because some of them are dealing with opioids, alcohol, and pharmaceutical issues. Uh, and they could actually add years to their life by adding cannabis and, and reducing those other things in their life. So it's important for us to teach people the truth about this healing flower. Uh, and if you don't want to smoke it because you don't want to compromise your immune system, you can take edibles, tinctures, topicals, vapes. I mean, there's a, so many different ways that you can- Loops. Cannab yeah. Loops. <laughs> so the cannabinoids can get into your system. Yeah. Huh. And so I just want to say- Interesting, Rick, they say uh, that to write about the whole Michigan scene and to teach people about what's what goes on uh, at the Cannabis Cups, at the Hash Bash, at the Monroe Fair. Um, now is the time of spring planting. Awesome. I, we're cooped up inside, but if you have a garden, it's time to plant seeds. And whether that be cannabis or you know your fruits and your vegetables and your ornamentals or whatever else you want to grow, now's the time to get that stuff into the ground. Uh, it's also the time of morels. Uh, so if you're out there picking for mushrooms, <laughs> find some morels. Uh, just stay away from other people. And again, I can't wait to uh, be back for the 50th Hash Bash next year. Uh, I love this digital aspect to it. I was in the other room. For <laughs> I think Stuart was in there too. So he said if you want to contact him with uh, this link, he would be happy to jump back in. Uh, and 
he had some interesting things to say. So, uh, and he's a tremendous, amazing uh, breeder, also from Michigan. Uh, so, basically, I just in closing, I want to tell people that like all things must pass, and this is going to pass. The the flu of 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 nineteen eighteen passed. Uh, it did its damage, but it, it went away. And so, uh, look forward to a brighter day. Uh, plant the seeds now for harvest later. And thank you always to the people of Michigan for always being so welcoming and having such amazing laws. Keep pushing to make them better. Expunge the records, free the prisoners, get a social use, and celebrate the cannabis flower. Also, I'm the host of the Free Weed Podcast, and I'm relaunching the podcast later this month. Uh, so please, uh, we've been doing that since 2011, the Free Weed from Danny Danko podcast. Uh, but we're relaunching it uh, f- because I know there's a lot of people that are going to be interested in home grow, and I'm going to be teaching people. Uh, there's 103 episodes up there already, wherever it is that you uh, get your podcasts from, Stitcher, iTunes, and everywhere else. Uh, but we're going to be adding more episodes starting this month, so please subscribe and check it out. Uh, it's a free way to learn about how to grow your own cannabis and get your own free weed. Danny, even before the COVID crisis, uh, cannabis cups seem to have disappeared from the national schedule. Does it look like that's an event series that we're going to see returning back to our forefront? Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, I know they're trying to do some digital uh, cup uh, sort of thing in the near future. And they're working on something for 420 um, to do some kind of a digital smokeout uh, session of some kind. Uh, but I don't really know very hard to predict the future um you know they've laid off some staff uh myself included for the time being so i'm i'm focusing on the podcast uh and you know i i i hope that you know i'll be back over there when the uh when the crisis is over uh but in the meantime you know i'm selling my books i'm doing the podcast i'm just trying to teach people to grow their own because uh, it's all well and good to have dispensaries, and everyone should, that should exist for sure. But uh, people should have the right to grow their own. Uh, it's a fun activity. It's amazing for patients to do for themselves to create their own medicine, and it's the only way to truly know what went into your 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 plants and what pesticides were used and what uh, strains they are, and if they it's what works for you uh, and your particular needs. So I do think home grow is really important. I think even dispensaries, um, they used to sell clones at Arborside, but they, they told them they couldn't do it anymore. And I think it's really smart for dispensaries to sell grow equipment and clones and encourage their customers to grow their own as well because it only benefits everybody in the end. So uh, that's been my thing you know, for all these years. I visit a lot of big grows and I write them up in high times, uh, but what I truly promote is growing your own in a living soil uh you know if you have the luxury of outdoors or a greenhouse that's great but if you can under, for under a thousand dollars you can pick up a tent four by four tent with the lighting system and everything you need to get started and uh you know and within one harvest you paid for the tent and uh, after that it's just you know free weed that's why i call the show free weed and that's why i think uh it should be free it should be given away to friends and and um, you know, like any other herb that you grow in your garden. Right on. Thanks a lot. I remember when you were in town, you certainly, uh, kind of a, lot, a lot of people were interested in your book. I'm kind of doing the speech that I would have given if I was there at the Diag, you know, right. <laughs> kind of ranting a little bit, but, uh, I, I had kind of a speech ready. So that, that's kind of what I wanted to talk about is just, uh, to keep the fight going, uh, you know, in the name of people like John Sinclair, who I'm just honored to have uh, shared this day with uh, digitally and virtually. Uh, it's people like that and the pioneers and the OGs that fought so hard to get us to where we are. So we just have to keep pushing to get to where we want to be, which is free the prisoners, expunge all the records, uh, grow your own, no doctor's note or any kind of you know nonsense to have to go through to, to go and pick up our cannabis. Uh, meds and uh, social use places where we can get back together uh, once this is all over and share our consumption of cannabis with each other because uh, there's nothing to be ashamed of and there's nothing to be uh, hidden about it uh, and I think 
that's becoming more and more apparent. And uh, I think it's the way that we can push through and get to where we need to be uh, so that our kids and their kids don't have to go through the stuff that, uh, you know, our forefathers and the elders and, and all the people did, like having their homes raided and their dogs shot and been thrown in jail and separated from their families and taken off of transplant lists and all these crazy things. Uh, these this multitude of injustices of the war on some drugs and uh, so yeah um, I think you know in honor of everybody we just keep that fight going for Jack Herrera and for Todd McCaria and um, all the people along the way Brownie Mary <laughs> Dennis Perone and uh, you know all of our uh, the people that came before us in this fight uh, I just think it's important uh, to keep on pushing and you know get to the promised land of uh, treating this flower like with the respect that it really deserves, which is as a healing medicine and uh, something that belongs in our bodies. We have cannabinoid receptors that want to recept, so feed the receptors. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Danny. Really appreciate it, man. I'm glad that you were able to get on and, and uh, be a part of this. Yeah, Much thanks. I appreciate it, too. Uh, again, check out the podcast. I got my book for, for beginner growers. Uh, that's on Amazon and eBay and all those places. Uh, and just, you know, like I said, the podcast is free to listen to. I got interviews in there with DJ Short and Sub Cool, rest in peace, and uh, people from all throughout the cannabis world. And like I said, we're starting it back up. I'm very excited to be uh, doing that as like a full-time gig and uh, virtually, of course, at first, but hopefully not uh, in, the, in the future. So thank you for having me. Uh, thank you, Michigan. Michiganders, <laughs> and uh, I appreciate being invited to celebrate Hash Batch with you guys. Absolutely, and and and, th and Arborside would have had you here had we been under different circumstances. So we should oh, recognize yeah. that. I, I so. had the flights already booked. Uh, yeah. I had the flights oh. already booked. So I, I, you know, I wish I, I wish I could be there. And again, uh, when I canceled, I got them back in credit. So hopefully, that the credit will get me there next year. All right. And uh, it'll be the 50th one, and I can't wait. And I hope to see you all uh, in person there, virtually if it has to be. But uh, I hope for it to be in person, and we can really celebrate that that 50th amazing, you know, golden anniversary of such an amazing event. Um, the Jubilee. All right, man. Thank thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Appreciate it. Hey, so. Um, so, man, I'm moving right through. I guess uh, we have a lot of people kind of lining up, ready to participate in this side of it. Chrissy, uh, any yeah. words of wisdom here before we move into uh, uh, getting to one of these, talking and listening to one of these uh, uh, next great artists here? Well, I think it's interesting that we're going through all these trials and tribulations, trials and errors, you know, for our first virtual hash bash. And then uh, hopefully, Hopefully, it'll really maybe be our only one. Next year, we'll be in person. So um, we have all of these trials and errors, and hopefully, we don't have to do it again. Um, but thank you for asking me to host with you, Jamie. I appreciate it. Um, I mean, I'll say pretty much what I think everyone is thinking. Corona is a giant cock block. I mean, <laughs> right? You're thinking it. I can see the hand. The hand heads are shaking, yeah. right? Yeah, Nick yeah, is in agreement. I can see that. In the literal sense, okay, obviously. And then also just everything, all the events, all the birthday parties, it's a big cock block. So I think it's awesome that you're getting together virtually. And thank you for asking me to join and host with you. And I'll kind of just interject throughout. Well, that's that. we'll work. Everybody's taking photos. Social media is where it is at. Next year, this should be 10 times as big. Post your photo. Next thing is you got a joint. Now is the time to pull it.